let me ask you a question, and then we're, we're going to, to talk about it. Actually, it's, uh, I guess it's somewhat related to some things that was spoken this morning um, there in Joshua 1.8, where uh, <clears throat> the Lord told Joshua that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, that you shall meditate therein day and night to observe, to do, according to all that's written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous. And the King James Version says, and you will have good success. Interesting, that's the only time in the Bible that the word success is used. Uh, the word successful is not in the Bible. And the word succeed is only used one time, and that was in the law, where if a man died childless, then his wife, his brother was to take his wife and raise up seed, and that seed would succeed by taking the name. But if you look at, uh, if you look at Joshua 1.8, the, uh, the word success, as, it, as it's uh, actually the make your way, uh, you will have good success, is one word, and it simply means to be circumspect. And the word circumspect is simply relating to uh, being cautious, being alert, uh, watchful. Uh, consequently, and I'm giving you a definition here, consequently intelligent. <clears throat> Well, I, I got to thinking about that word intelligent. And, um, you know, we talk about intelligent people. Um, but I'm not sure that we really understand, even by definition, what the word intelligent means. And often the word intelligent is equated to intellectual. But if you look the definition of intellectual, you look up the definition of intellectual and look up the definition of intelligent, you'll find they're not the same. Actually, intelligent is talking about uh, perception, uh, being wise, being able to discern. Where intellectual has to do with... Uh, terminology dealing with the brain. Uh, and I look at it this way. The Bible, the Word of God, will make you intelligent. Secular education will make you intellectual. Not intelligent. Okay? Okay? And we're in a um, period of time to where tremendous emphasis is put on formal education. Now, here again, I, I suppose I should put a, put a disclaimer in here. <laughs> um, we have a Bible college, you understand, so I'm not teaching against uh, education and degrees or, and this type of thing. So with that said, uh, it concerns me that so much emphasis is put on the, the education and not on being, uh, uh, having the ability to make good judgment, to discern things, um, common sense. Uh, intelligent would be closely related to common sense which seems to be lacking in the society today, seems to be lacking in the church world today. We have uh, more intellectualism than we do common sense. And consequently, we make some foolish decisions, from my perspective anyway, because we make decisions that aren't supported by or in agreement with the word and principles of God. 
Now, the Word of God obviously doesn't address every issue in your life. But yet there are principles in the Word of God that will cover anything you encounter in life. And we must learn to follow the principles. Not the principles of the world, but the principles of the Word. Now, John the Baptist came on the scene and he was announcing to the people, the kingdom of God is at hand. Which the word uh, kingdom simply means the dominion of God is right here. It's at hand. And then obviously he's referring to Jesus being the forerunner of Jesus. When Jesus comes on the scene... He tells them the kingdom of God is near you. God's dominion is near you. But the religious uh, system of the day was intellectual. They prided themselves in their knowledge. And anytime you're reading in the Bible and you see doctors, it's talking about theology, if you will, is the way we would say it today. Doctors of divinity, doctors of theology. When it said, so when you see the word doctors in, in the Bible with the religious people, it's talking about their doctoral degree, if you will. Okay? And these people are the ones that was challenging Jesus. The king of the kingdom. It's not wise to challenge the king of a kingdom, whether it's a natural kingdom and certainly not a spiritual kingdom. They were intellectual, but they were not intelligent. And Jesus told them to search the scriptures. So they prided themselves in knowing the scriptures. He said, search the scriptures. In the scriptures, you think you have life. But the scriptures are talking about me. The life is not in the scriptures. The life is in the person. So intellectualism will not get you life. It will get you applause. It will get you speaking engagements. You with me? But it does not give you life. Life comes through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like the little phrase you generally see around Christmas, wise men still seek Him. But isn't it interested, interesting that intellectual people don't. That in itself says they're not very intelligent. It's a foolish man that doesn't pursue the Lord. It's a foolish man that doesn't build on the Word of God. You remember the parable Jesus gave between uh, concerning the wise man and the foolish man who built their houses? One dug deep, founded it on something solid. This is solid. The Word of God's solid. The other built on sand. And I'm telling you, if you follow the systems of the world, they're changing constantly. As a matter of fact, that's just the buzzword change. We need change. We need change. We need change. And the change has been from bad to worse. Listen, if what you have is working for you, why do you want to change it? You understand? I mean, if it's doing you good, <laughs> I have a strong recommendation to stay with what's working. Rather than to get out here in experimentation and get yourself in a mess. 
And that's what the world's done. That's what the church has done. It's got out here in experimentation, trying this, trying that, trying the other. God tries nothing. He doesn't have to try it. He puts it into practice because he knows it works. Men practice medicine or they practice this or they practice that. God gets it right before he begins. And he's expecting us to do the same. So then what is success? Is success having papers hanging on a wall? Is success having a, a, a large bank account? Is success having uh, multiple properties or a huge ministry or empire? Is success having a great following? What is success? That's not how God measures success. God measures success, and I go back to Joshua 1 8, by whether or not you follow the Word of God. If you're obeying the Word of God, you're doing what God tells you to do, you are successful. I don't care how the world rates you. You understand? Don't, don't let the world determine who you are. You let the Word of God speak to you of who you are. And you stay in agreement with the Word of God. And see, there, there are different positions in the body of Christ, just like there are different positions or different members in your physical body. It's not that one position is more important than the other. It's a different position. It has a different function. Your physical body has many members but different functions. And believe it or not, they're all important. And if that little finger is doing what it's supposed to do, that little finger should be happy that it's doing what it's supposed to do because it is successful. You understand? But the secular world doesn't view it that way. And the modern day church or the religious society doesn't view success that way. You understand, I used to be in a denomination. And you go to these conferences and all these things on a regular basis and, you know, year after year. And you'll find how they measure success it's by the man who's pastoring the biggest church. Then that's successful. That's the golden hair boy. That's not the way God measures success. It's not how, how, how b big the, the crowd is. It's not the attendance, you understand. It's not the, the, the offerings that are coming into the church. That's not how God measures success. Am I circumspect? Am I cautious? Am I wise? Am I alert? You understand? Am I intelligent in the sight of God? You know, from time to time I get laughed at because of vocabulary and some of the sayings, that idioms, colloquialism, and that type thing, and uh, maybe mispronounce a word here and there, but I have never, uh, you know, presented myself as intellectual, and I'm not sure there'd be enough evidence to convict me in court. Do you understand? But I do want to be viewed by God as intelligent, that being that He follows the Word, that He listens to the Word, that He lives His life according to the Word. I was listening to the song that was, was playing uh, uh, when I came up, and it was talking about worship. And the reason I live is to worship you. But I don't think people understand that's that line. That your life is your worship. How you live your life before God determines whether you're worshiping God. It's not what you do in a sanctuary. What do you do out in the world? That's where the worship is really manifested. That's when other people see 
you worship God by your obedience to God, by your attention to God, by your living for God. You're worshiping from the inside. You understand? And then it manifests in the outside. And I'm certainly not against worship in a corporate setting. But if you're not, if your life is not a life of worship, you're going through the motions in a corporate setting. You're just deceiving you. You with me? Wise men still seek Him daily. Daily. Not just at Christmas. Daily. We're in pursuit of the Lord. So we're, we're looking to the Lord to define success in our lives. Not to the world. And I highly recommend that you get your eyes off of the world and don't let anyone else define you. Let God define you. I believe by the principles of the word that the Lord knew me before I got here. I'm spirit. How about you? He knew the spirit that was going to enter into the body that my mother gave birth to. He knew me. This is what he told Jeremiah. Before you were conceived, I knew you. And before your mother delivered you, I already had your purpose in life. I called you to be a prophet. I don't think that was exclusively for Jeremiah. I think that God does the same thing with individuals that come into the world. Now it's up to us whether we get in tune with what God wants us to do. Whether we're looking to the Lord or to the world for our direction. If you look to the world for your direction, then you're going to go for the gold. You're going to go for the power. You understand? That's the two things that the secular world is seeking. Money and power. And the two go hand in hand. The more money you have, the more power you have. If you're a billionaire, you have a loud voice. You understand? There's a proverb that talks about a city being under siege and through the wisdom of a wise man. They conquered the army. And then they forgot about the wise man because he was poor. Isn't that incredible? Because he's insignificant after they get out of trouble. We can handle it now. <laughs> well, I've learned that I can't handle it. That I need the wisdom of God operating in my life. And if I will be led by the Spirit, the Spirit leads no one down an unsuccessful path. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you can't help but succeed. You will be successful regardless of what the world says. If you're doing what the Spirit of God tells you to do, if no one applauds you, if you don't get one convert, if nothing happens that looks good to the eyes of the world, you're still successful if you've been obedient. You know, if Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel would have let the world define them as whether or not they were successful, the world would have said they're failures. And so would modern day religion. But they were successful in the eyes of God. Why? Because they were sold out to God. Because they followed the lead of God. And in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, they still let their light shine. You understand? Not looking to man, but looking to God. And that's what we have to do today. So what is success? It's intelligence. It's intelligence. Now let me carry that farther. Intelligence is listening to the Word of God and obeying the Word of God. So then what is success? Success is 
hearing the word and obeying the word, then you're successful. So now everybody in the room knows how to be successful. And you don't have to go seeking the gold rushes. Seek God. You want to be successful in life, seek God. You know, I was just talking to a, a, a man this week who came by and wanted to talk to me for a few minutes. He's getting ready to make a move. And, uh, and we have some things in common in the way the, um, the Lord's dealt with him and the way the Lord dealt with me. Um, I was doing okay in the secular world and uh, had been... Uh, uh, the people, the company that I worked for was very honorable to me. They hired me, telling me that they were not hiring me for what I was going to do when I got hired, but for what they wanted me to do later on. And they had plans for me to be the director over the South and all that type stuff. And uh, um, then about uh, two months before the Lord told me to leave secular work, uh, Vice President called me and told me what was in the making, and they were not yet sure where the where they wanted that position. If they wanted it in Charlotte or Greensboro, would I be willing to move? And I said, I'll do whatever I need to do. And uh, then uh, the week before the Lord spoke to me, the Vice President called me, and he said. Uh, you know, you'll be staying in Greensboro and uh, uh, the decision's already been made and we will be announcing your position, um, you know, in, in two or three weeks. Which was, uh, by world standards, I thought prestigious and uh, more lucrative, you understand. But, after that, I was driving to work and the Spirit of the Lord said, it's time to leave. Isn't that amazing? Right when you get ready to fulfill a dream, <laughs> this is a position people look up to. And actually, the guy told me I'm grooming someone to take my place. And the guy who took my place, when I resigned, is in that position now. They kept their word, is what I'm saying, okay? But the, the Lord said, leave. Now, the world says, "You are you out of your mind? You, you're crazy. But which one's success? Would success be taking the position, having the company car, good salary and all this type stuff and missing God or is success leaving all that and obeying God? Which one was the intelligent move? Not the intellectual move, but the intelligent move. And I will submit to you today that I made the intelligent move and I never looked back. I've never been tempted to to go back. I'll tell you what they told me. The vice president told me when I turned my resignation in and I told him that, you know, I was resigning to go into the ministry. Um, he called me. He said, what do I have in my hand? <laughs> I said, well, I assume you have my resignation. He said, I respect what you're doing. And he said, if you were going to some other company, I would compete. <laughs> But he said, I'm not going to make it hard on you. But if you get out there and you find that that's, that's really not what you thought it was or whatever. He said, I want you to come back here. And he said, if I don't have a position, I'll create a position for you. But that never was an enticement to me. Because I knew I heard God. I knew the word of God. The intelligence is going to stay with God, not go with the intellectual. You know, you could always be thinking, you, you understand for seven months I had zero income. From salary to nothing. 
testing time. <laughs> you understand? But never in that period of time was I tempted to call Jim up and ask him about that offer. He was good for his word, I know that. He was a man of integrity, I know that. But I was never tempted to go back because I felt like when I left, I left. I burned the bridge in my heart because I felt like intelligence is following God, not the world. So what's success? You have to understand how I say this. Somebody could say, well, he's bragging, he's doing this, and that's, that's a, that would be a, a blatant lie. I feel like today I'm as successful, as successful as I could possibly be because I'm doing what God called me to do. Can you say that? Don't answer. This is what the Lord is wanting to do, provoke us. Not to look at someone else defining success for us, but understanding what success is. It's hearing and obeying God. Doing what God told you to do. If you do what God's told you to do, you are and will be successful. Amen. That's the message. So be successful. Now you know how. You have the instructions. you got it right here. <laughs> Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hand's with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we're glad to invite you to rise up let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen? Amen. Amen.